Do another video from lessons learned from First Kings, and I um, got my lovely wife Susie with me tonight. And um, as you're reading First Kings, uh, you get to this place, and you know we've talked about so many things already from uh, David to Solomon, and so many things about uh, uh, what Solomon was going through uh, as he was, you know, coming into his own as a king. And uh, as we look at this, we get to this place where. You know, David's already, I mean, excuse me, Solomon's already got people around him, but he begins to put people in positions and he begins to put people in places where he feels like they need to be. Uh, and you get down to chapter four, uh, specifically verses 11 and 15, and you see where David is putting some, it names specifically some people he's putting in place that he wants there. And so, um, and as you look at it, it's family. Um, intriguing. Yeah, very intriguing. Um, because, you know, we're pastors. Um, we've been in ministry a while together. And, and one of the things um, that we've heard a lot about is that, you know, um, two schools of thought. One is um, always hire family because those are the ones you can trust. Uh, or never hire family because if you got to deal with them, you got to correct them. It, it causes problems at family dinners. Uh, both are a little extreme. Yeah, both are extreme. But here's the principle here. Um, it's simply this. Don't be afraid um, to use qualified family members in your leadership structure, um, whether it's uh, you're a Sunday school teacher and you need an assistant, whether you're a senior pastor uh, and you need an associate or, a, in my case, a youth pastor. Um you know, Susie and I, we get this question a lot, um, and I know I do, you probably do too, that, well, she's the youth pastor um, because you're the pastor and she's just that by default. But that's not true for you, is it? No. I love working with our teenagers, and I feel like in our current place um, that that's where God has called me to be at, to be with our teens. And that's key, you know, and that's why I say, you know, and you look at this that David, or excuse me, that Solomon was writing about Solomon. And it's, I mean, he's got qualified people there and he's using them. Uh, and so uh, don't be afraid to use family. Uh, now, you got to make sure you can get along with them. You got to make sure that you actually like them um, because family is, you know, well, that's family. Uh, and so as you're going through doing whatever it is, you know, I'm talking specifically from a church standpoint. But, you know, this applies in business. It applies mm -hmm. uh, um, in, in any area of life. If you've got somebody that's qualified to do the job uh, and their family, that's okay. Use them anyway. Um, and don't let people say, well, you just hired them because they're your child or you hired them because they're your spouse, whatever. Listen, if they're qualified, they're qualified. It doesn't matter who they are. Uh, and if they can do the job, let them do the job. Uh, if they can't do the job, don't hire them in the first place. But Solomon was not afraid to use people that he knew was qualified, no matter who they were. And this goes back to what we've been talking about with his wisdom, that God gave him wisdom. And you've got to use wisdom when you're choosing whomever they may be. You've got to make sure that they are qualified. You've got to make sure that you're compatible and that you can work together. And so uh, when we look at 1 Kings and this lesson we're learning here, it's just simply this. Don't be afraid to use qualified family members uh, in your leadership structure. So I hope you're blessed by this. I hope you can use this principle um, and uh, whatever's going on right now. Uh, I know we've got a lot with the coronavirus, COVID-19, all that going on. Uh, whatever it is, trust God. God will lead you. God will guide you. God will direct you. So trust him, lean on him. Uh, and I look forward to when we can all be together again. God bless you. Stay safe.